So we'll get into that in the next session. I don't want to get too deep into it now. Uh, makara means crocodile. Yeah. Yeah, and Capricorn. Kumbha means a person carrying a water jug, a water carrier, Aquarius. You've all heard of the Kumbha Mela in India. It, Mela means a festival or assembly of, or, of people, like a fair. And Kumbha is the time of the, of the year when the sun is in the com, uh, constellation Kumbha, in Rashi Kumbha. And Mina means fish. Huh? And Pisces, of course, is known as the fish. So we have in the, oh, I should have used the pointers, sorry. So in Mesha Rashi is a fire sign, male, movable. Movable means people born under that sign can easily change. Fixed means they can't change. Very difficult for them to change. And common is a sort of a medium in between the two. They can change, but it takes some work. And similarly, each sign has a lord. One of the planets, or grahas, is the lord of that sign, according to its nature. And the lordship of signs is very important in chart interpretation. It means that that's, that planet represents the qualities of that sign. And so according to where the Lord of a, of a Rashi is located, then different interpretations are there in the scriptures. Uh, and these interpretations are so exact, so precise and right on. You'll just be amazed. <laughs> you go through a person's chart and uh, you calculate the Lords of all the signs and where they're located. Oh, man, the, the predictions you get are just so amazing. Uh, so it's very, very easy once you know these things uh, to make interpretations. Now, I'm sure somebody is going to ask, where can I get this chart? Uh, so all these charts are available for download from our site from the Jyotish course. Uh, uh, maybe later on today, I'll make a post where you can download all these graphics and charts because I'm sure you'd like to have them for study. In fact, these charts, the information on these charts really should be memorized. Uh, if you're going to be uh, a competent astrologer, because you'll find, otherwise you'll find yourself looking through, he's like, Udava is laughing because he knows that when, I don't have them memorized. <laughs> so when I do somebody's chart, I'm always like looking through all these notes. Let's see, what, what's the Lord of so-and-so? <laughs> it's very difficult. Uh, but I don't want to be a professional astrologer. I just, I just want to be a wise guy. I mean, a wise man. <laughs> anyway, all this information really... Uh, it will become very familiar to you because every time you do a chart or every time you uh, try to interpret somebody's chart, you're going to be looking this stuff up. So after a while, it's going to be like, well, I might as well just memorize it. Otherwise, I spend the rest of my life looking stuff up. The, the lords are only five planets, right? Uh, no. No, they're all nine planets. This, this chart is incomplete because I don't want to confuse people with Rahu and Ketu until we, until we talk about what they are. See, I don't want to get into all that complicated stuff right away. I want to give people a chance to get used to it. These are the nakshatras. Here's the name of the nakshatras. And you notice we're using the Vedic spellings, diacritics for the Vedic characters, because these are really Vedic names. And they, they don't map across into English very well. So we're going to use these Vedic spellings as a standard in our course, and the Vedic names also, uh, because there's like three or four different ways of spelling each one of these in English, and none of them are very good because they don't really get all the nuances of the pronunciation. For example, Ashvini Nakshatra, is from zero degrees Aries. 
to 13 degrees 19 minutes Aries. Uh, or Mesha. Zero degrees Mesha to 13 19 Mesha. In other words, each nakshatra is 13 degrees and 20 minutes. Just like each of the 12 Rashis is 30 degrees. Mesha is 0 degrees to 30 degrees. Vrishabha is 30 degrees to 60 degrees. Mituna is 60 degrees to 90 degrees. Karkata is 90 degrees to 120 degrees and so on. Similarly, in the nakshatras, each one occupies 13 degrees and 20 minutes. They're all the same size. And so as we go around the chart, we see the same sequence repeated, uh, I believe it's three times, from zero, yeah, to here we go, uh, Ashlesha goes to 2959 uh, Cancer, Karkata. And then Magha, I mean, it begins on uh, zero degrees Singha, or Leo. And again, every 13 degrees and 20 minutes. So these are the first 18 nakshatras. Then the rest of the nakshatras are given in this view. And you can see how they go all the way to 2959 Mina. Here's the other chart showing how the Rashis and the nakshatras are related. They occupy the same uh, space along the ecliptic. He's saying, are the Rashis and the nakshatras located far away from another in space? Oh boy. <laughs> some of them are and some of them aren't. From our point of view, they're all right next to each other in space. But in, you know, relative to uh, the galaxy, no. Some are closer, some are farther away. Uh, like all the stars in the Orion Nebula are relatively close together in space. Uh, but then just to the south of Orion is Sirius and, uh, you know, all, and Scorpio. Uh, Zubenel Ganeshwar and all those uh, strange sounding stars. Uh, they're located in a completely different part of the galaxy, but they just appear from our point of view to be located together. Remember, the stars don't control anything. They are just a map by which we measure the motions of the planets, which allow us to determine patterns in time. Remember, don't get caught up thinking that the map is the territory. Huh? The map is different from the territory. The stars and planets are different from time. Time is what we're measuring. Time is what we're interested in here. It's just that the planets and stars help us measure time. Uh, but really, time is the thing that's causing all the changes. So it's time that we want to know about. The stars, the nakshatras, rashis, and all that are just a way of measuring time. Please don't forget that. Don't get caught up in the map and think that it's the territory, okay? I just wanted to know that for information about their position uh, in the universe. Well, you can look at any good astronomy site and see where the different constellations are located in the galaxy. Uh, but that's not something I want to get into here. Okay, let's go on. Okay, here we are back again, looking at the, na the Rashis and Nakshatras in relation to the horizon. Now let's suppose that we're doing someone's astrological chart. And it so happens that they are born exactly at this moment. Okay? So we have Mesha Rashi rising, uh, one degree. And Ashvini Nakshatra rising. Uh, and then on the other side, we have Tula Rashi. 
and Chitra Nakshatra are setting. So how does that look on a person's astrological chart? Let me point out the different features of this chart. Remember, we have uh, the uh, Mesha Rashi rising. Mesha Rashi is rising, so therefore it's in the east. And Tula, Bhav, uh, Tula Rashi is setting, therefore it's in the west. And from Mesha through Kanya are below the horizon, and from Tula through Mina are above the horizon. Let's go back and look at the sky map again. Let's go back and look at the chart again. 